Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Hentevi Minute. I'm Dr. Peter Hentevi, and today we're tackling a critical question. Who truly cares about cardiac arrest? Well, I hope the answer is that all of us do, because how your crews perform on every single arrest has a direct impact on your yearly survival statistics. Let me illustrate with an example. Take city number one, who has 100 cardiac arrests every year, but only 2% of those patients survive neurologically normal. That's just two people. Meanwhile, city number two also has 100 cardiac arrests, but they have a 10% neurointact survival rate, meaning 10 people survive. Well, it should be pretty clear that city number one is underperforming compared to city number two, but how do they stack up against other cities in their state or across the country? Well, that's the focus of today's discussion. The data is out there, it's accessible to all of you, and once you know your agency's cardiac arrest statistics and can compare them to others, you'll be empowered to make the changes that truly move the needle. This is where CARES comes in. So what is CARES? It's an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest registry, and if your agency participates, and as you can see in this graphic, 34 states do, each time you handle a cardiac arrest, the data is entered into the CARES website for that specific case. Now, in 2023, over 138,000 cases were uploaded to CARES from EMS agencies across the country. Now, that's a vast amount of data, and it provides a very clear picture how we're doing on a national scale. But before we dive deeper into the registry, let's cover some basic cardiac arrest statistics that you can use to predict how many cardiac arrests you'll likely encounter in your city or county. Here's the math. For every 100,000 people in your population, you can expect around 100 cardiac arrests per year. Of those, you'll likely only work 50, meaning that's the number of cases where resuscitation is actually attempted. Now, how many of those do you think will actually leave the hospital neurologically intact? Well, based on the 2023 CARES data, 8.1% of all arrests resulted in patients walking out of the hospital with a CPC score of one or two. Now that's a total of four people. Let's compare this to a lower performing agency with only a 4% neurointact survival rate. That's just two survivors. And what about a high performing agency with a 14% survival rate? That's seven people. So in a city of 100,000 people, the difference between a high and low performing EMS system could mean five more lives saved. And every life matters. Take for example the story of Alan. He suffered a cardiac arrest on a tennis court in Palm Beach County. He received great bystander CPR from the tennis coach, followed by 30 minutes of high performance CPR by Palm Beach County Fire Rescue on the scene, including six double sequential defibrillations. Now, if you missed that video on double sequential, please be sure to check it out in the link below. Now, here's a recent photo of Alan. That smile says it all. Every patient really does matter. Now, let's take a deeper dive into CARES. There are three main modules in CARES. Dispatch, there's an EMS module, and a hospital module. Each of these entities contributes specific data points after every cardiac arrest call. Now, as you can see from the slide, the dispatch module has only five data points. The EMS module, a little longer, 37 data points, and then there's 19 additional data points. And then there's a hospital module, which has five required, and then eight supplemental data points. Let's quickly talk about the dispatch module. This is where critical information about the 911 call and the telecommunicator CPR is captured. For example, they ask, how long does it take your telecommunicator to recognize that cardiac arrest? What about how quickly do they begin CPR instructions? And how long until the first chest compression? Now, I'll tell you, if you haven't reviewed your times to first compression, I strongly encourage you to do so. It can be very eye-opening, trust me. The job of the telecommunicator, by the way, is incredibly challenging, and they often face barriers to effective CPR. But with the right training, continuous quality improvement, and feedback, these barriers can be overcome. Trust me, the juice is definitely worth the squeeze. I have to say, in my systems, 
we found that it was taking our telecommunicators on average five minutes to start chest compressions. That was a problem. The gold standard, as we know, is two minutes. Once we identified this issue, we immediately set out to fix it. By measuring our performance, we were able to implement changes that led to better outcomes. And by benchmarking your data using CARES, you can do the same. So let's take a look at where you can find your CARES data. It's as simple as logging into the mycares.net website, putting in your username and password, and it'll print out your report. You'll be able to download the three-page PDF, which has flow diagrams of all of your outcomes. To be honest, this is not my favorite view of the data, so instead, for now, let's focus on the top right of this PDF, which you can see here is a summary of the overall survival statistics. Let's go through them one at a time. First is overall survival. That refers to the percentage of patients who survived and were discharged from the hospital. However, it's important to note that this metric does not differentiate between patients who were discharged with good neurointact function and those who were not. This document makes it a little challenging to pinpoint the exact number of patients who survived neurologically normal. Next is bystander witness survival. That indicates a survival rate of patients whose cardiac arrest was witnessed by a bystander and who survived to hospital discharge. It's a pretty straightforward metric and it emphasizes the importance of early intervention by bystanders. The last two are the Utstein survival statistics. But what is Utstein? Utstein refers to an historic abbey in Norway where in the early 90s, a group of resuscitation scientists gathered to establish standardized reporting systems for cardiac arrest outcomes. This gathering led to the development of a common nomenclature now known as the Utstein style, which is widely used in cardiac arrest research. Utstein survival specifically measures the survival rate of patients who had a witness arrest with an initial shockable rhythm. That's it. These are the patients who generally have the highest chance of survival because shockable rhythms like VF are more responsive to early defibrillation. Utstein bystander survival goes a step further. It includes patients whose cardiac arrest was witnessed, they had an initial shockable rhythm, and they received bystander CPR. Now this subset of patients are expected to have an even higher chance of survival due to the critical early intervention provided by bystanders, just like Alan. It's important to remember that of all the cardiac arrests you encounter every year, only about 20% will present with a shockable rhythm. So maximizing outcomes for these patients should be your top priority, given their higher potential for survival with timely and effective intervention. But what's missing from all these survival statistics? It's the true percentage of patients who survive neurologically intact with a CPC of one or two. As you can see on this image, a CPC of one represents individuals who are conscious, alert, and have no neuro deficits. A CPC of two indicates moderate disability, but still allows a person to function independently. These two categories are considered neurologically intact. On the other hand, CPC of three, four, or five, those are not considered good outcomes. And that's why I emphasize the importance of comparing our CPC one and two outcomes rather than just looking at all the CPC scores combined. So, if we go back to the survival rates listed at the top right of the CARE survival report, these rates include all the CPC scores. So, where can you find the data specifically for neuro and tax survival? Well, it's hidden. It is available on a detailed spreadsheet that I like to call the money shot. But this spreadsheet is only accessible to the state CARES coordinator. In Florida, we're very fortunate to have an exceptional coordinator Tom DiBernardo, who deserves a lot of credit for successfully implementing CARES across our entire great state. The real value is here in the spreadsheet you see on the screen. Let's scroll down to the bottom where it says overall survival. Three rows down from that, you'll find the survival statistic labeled with good or moderate cerebral performance. That means CPC one or two. This is where you can truly assess your outcomes and compare them to both state and national averages. I hope this video highlights the power of the CARES registry in showing where your agency stands compared to the state and national averages. It's a vital tool for improving survival rates from out-of-hospital cardiac arrest 
by addressing any of the weak links in the chain of survival in your region. Remember, accurate data entry by dispatch, EMS, and hospitals is crucial. By thoroughly analyzing your local data, you'll be able to identify areas for improvement and ultimately save more lives. It's stories like Allen's and many other survivors of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest that clearly demonstrate why our work is so important. Thank you for your dedication, your hard work, and all that you do. This has been Dr. Peter Antevi. Thanks for watching another edition of the Antevi Minute.